What's up YouTube? And welcome to the next entry in my console collection series. Today we're going to be covering a fairly neglected system, the Game Boy Color. And I'll start off as always by talking a little bit about the hardware, kind of what my story with the uh, history with the system is, and then go over my game library. Uh, today I'll be covering games that I have complete in the box, and uh, several of these are loose. Uh, very common with the portable systems to not be able to find the uh, boxes and manuals for these. So, uh, of course, like to have complete games in my collection, but not always the case with a system like this. So, uh, just to give you a little bit of the history, this is my original Game Boy Color that I purchased new in, I believe, 1998, whenever these first came out. Um, I never actually owned an original Game Boy. This was my first step into the Nintendo portables. Um, I actually had a Sega Game Gear before I had one of these. That was my first portable system. So, as you can see, in 1998, purchased this new at Walmart, which is unusual because I barely ever shop there, for uh, $69.96. Um, kind of interesting that these have more than doubled in price for uh, Nintendo's current 2DS or 3DS handhelds today. So the uh, box itself is kind of neat. It has that reflective look to the, uh, the side there, which was uh, very similar to the box art on these. Um, you can see through the back panel, as was typical on Nintendo systems, to read the serial number for retailers. And uh, has some screenshots of um, some of the new titles that were coming out as launch games or at least around that era. Uh, Game Boy Color was also backwards compatible with the original Game Boy, which was one of the things that made it pretty unique. Um, pretty neat that you could play the entire library of your older games, and also they were enhanced a little bit with a limited color palette. So that's a little bit of a look at the uh, system box. Let's take a look at the system itself. Uh, this is, again, my original Game Boy Color I bought brand new in the late 90s. And this is the Dandelion Color. I think there was four or five different colors you could get it in. I don't really know why I chose the yellow one. I'm not a big yellow fan, but uh, maybe just this was what was in stock at the day I needed to buy one. So, uh, very similar in uh, shape to the Game Boy Pocket. Uh, really, the difference is it has this bulge in the back for the battery pack. Uh, this one takes double A's versus the triple A's that the Game Boy Pocket took. Um, does have that mono speaker on the front right corner there. Otherwise, the button layout's pretty much the same as the original Game Boy. And uh, as far as the system ports, you've got your link and accessory port here. Uh, volume knob has a uh, AC power input there if you want to play this off a home power, power wall unit. Uh, I've got your headphone jack, standard jack, which was nice on these early ones. Um, this is just your power switch on off. And the cartridges just enter into the back there. I'm sure you can figure that out pretty easily. Uh, one thing that made the Game Boy Color kind of unique is this system also had an infrared port. It uh, wasn't used real often, but this was also another alternative for linking games up and communicating with other devices. So that's a little bit about the, uh, the hardware itself. Um, my system works great. Like I say, it's really not had a whole lot of use because soon after I got the Game Boy Color, um, I moved into the Game Boy Advance and really put this one aside. Um, didn't really see a whole lot of need to use it at that point since the Game Boy Advance could play everything that this could play. So a very popular accessory during the time of this uh, was the worm light. <laughs> and I just wanted to point this out as well. Uh, worm light is an accessory that just snaps into the side port there. And uh, since the Game Boy was not backlit, it gives you a little bit of light. However, it does kind of create a reflection on the screen. But it does make it playable in uh, you know a dark room if you do need to do that. So I have that accessory just for, I don't know, long late evenings playing games in the dark, but uh, not something I would use too often today, since you can get a backlit Game Boy Advance. So that's a little bit about, uh, like I said, the system itself. Uh, let me talk about the games I have that are complete in the box, and then we'll move into my loose games that are part of the collection here. Uh, first game on my stack is Action Man, and this is not a um, franchise that I care anything about, but what I found out about this game uh, somewhat recently it is, is that this was a uh, platformer action game that was developed by Natsume. It wasn't published by them, but this one is one that they um, created themselves in Japan. I don't even know if it was intended for the Action Man license because it could be pretty much any character and still play the same, uh, but it actually is somewhat fun. You can get this game dirt, dirt cheap, and uh, it's well worth the money. Um, I would say the Game Boy Color is one of the systems that is most affordable to collect for, especially if you were going for a full set. There's just a few rare exceptions that go for some serious money, uh, Shantae being the big one, but uh, most of the games can be had very, very cheap, especially if you don't care if they're complete. 
Uh, one of these that I bought brand new, this might have been actually right when I got my system, is Classic Bubble Bobble. Uh, obviously, I'm a huge Bubble Bobble fan. This game has good artwork on the front uh, compared to some of the Bubble Bobble games out there in the U.S., but uh, unfortunately, it's not very good whatsoever. <laughs> uh, this was about the era that Taito started licensing out their portable uh Bubble Bobble franchise games to third parties, and this one's no exception. Uh, this was developed by a Japanese company called Gaga, and um, it's not really that great. Uh, very similar to the Game Boy games that came out on the original Game Boy in this series, but um, not very enhanced whatsoever. Uh, really wasn't until the Game Boy Advance that we started to get some, some better games in that series. Uh, very similar note, this is Bust and Move 4, uh, obviously the puzzle game series that has the same characters. Uh, this is a typical Acclaim hack job, <laughs> publishing job. Uh, they just reused the artwork from Bust and Move 99 for the home consoles, even though this title is different. Uh, Bust and Move 4 is probably my favorite in the series on the PS1, uh, but the Game Boy Advance version is really, or Game Boy Color version is not nearly as good. Um, as you can see again, it's it's been limited with uh, the use of color and things like that. It's playable, you know, if you want a portable game, but there's better games in the series that have come after this one. Uh, then we have the Flintstones Burger Time in Bedrock. Um, again, <laughs> Flintstones is not really a franchise I care a whole lot about. However, this is the arcade classic Burger Time for your Game Boy Color. Yeah, with a Flintstones coat of paint. Um, actually plays okay, and uh, really strange use of the franchise, but uh, it works fine. This game's, game's not too bad, and it's pretty cheap to get. Uh, one I got very recently is this, Hands of Time. Uh, really just kind of an obscure game by Titus. Um, not really anything I'm probably going to play too much, but I uh, was curious about it, so I decided to grab it. Then we get into one of the all-time classics of the Game Boy Color. Uh, if you want a reason to own this hardware or to own uh, a game that you can get that's really top-notch and will give you a lot of playtime is Metal Gear Solid. Um, this one has the artwork and came out around the era of the PS1 game. However, it plays a lot like the original Metal Gear on the NES. Um, however, much enhanced. I really enjoy this game, much more so than the NES uh, games in the series. I played this game for several hours. I'd actually like to complete this at some point, but uh, this is definitely one of the highlights of the Game Boy Color library, and I could highly recommend that one. Uh, another odd use of a franchise is Monster Rancher Explorer. <laughs> um, I can't really say I'm a big fan of the Monster Rancher games, but this is not a Monster Rancher game per se. It has the characters from the series, but it is really a new game in the Solomon's Key series, or Fire and Ice, if you're familiar with those games. Um, great Tecmo puzzle action game and uh, highly recommended. You don't need to be a fan of the characters whatsoever to enjoy this game, and uh, really just, again, a good use of an old game franchise. Uh, brought back to life in a newer day. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this one too much. This is just Road Rash. I grabbed this super cheap. Not really something I'm going to play too much, but there it is. Then we get into one of the very few shooters for the system. This is Project S11 by Sunsoft. Um, pretty generic artwork on the cover. The game itself is okay. Uh, kind of plays like a compile shooter. And uh, as long as your expectations aren't too high, I think you'll enjoy this game. It's not too bad. Um, it's gone up in price quite a bit uh, over the last year or two, but it's, I would say, one of the more common uh, early Game Boy Color games. So you should be able to still get this at a decent price, um, you know, if you look around a little bit. Uh, then we get into Warlocked. This is not a game I've played, but uh, I believe it's a uh, real-time strategies type game, I guess. Um, Nintendo published it, but I don't think they developed this one. I believe it was European developed, so um, decent artwork on the cover, but again, not something I've put any time into. Um, I mentioned Shantae earlier. That is probably the crown jewel of the Game Boy Color library. Unfortunately, I do not own that game. It goes for a massive amount of money, and I couldn't even find it back when it was new. Um, so I, I know that game is genuinely rare. However, this is the game that the developer Way Forward released after Shantae. Uh, this was a very late release for the Game Boy Color, and even has levels that uh, only work on the Game Boy Advance using the same cartridge. So yeah, it was very much a crossover game. Uh, this one is starting to get discovered now, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It has this anti-gravity feature in it with the gameplay, um, and really detailed graphics for the system. Uh, game Boy Color is known for having pretty lousy graphics and music, and this is one of the rare exceptions, I would say. Um, so I would definitely recommend grabbing this one while you can. Uh, it could be on a trajectory like Shantae, give, a, give it a, yeah, another year or two. Uh, another odd use of a franchise <laughs> is Yogi Bear Great Balloon Blast. Um, again, I don't care about Yogi Bear. However, 
this is a title puzzle game called Pop and Pop, which was an arcade release and also got a release on the Japanese PlayStation. Uh, this is the Game Boy Color version of it, and uh, for the U.S. version, they just gave it a lick of uh, character change with the Yogi Bear characters, but it still plays like Pop and Pop, which is a really fun puzzle action game. Uh, the next few games I got as a lot, uh, there were several X-Men related games that came out for the Game Boy Color. I would say all of these are about on par with each other. They're not fantastic, but they're uh, they're worth a look if you want something cheap and, cheap and playable for the system. Uh, so we have X-Men Mutant Wars. These are all kind of like action platformers. Um, I think the next one, X-Men Mutant Academy, this one actually might be a fighting game. I haven't played this one in a while. Yeah, I think this one's the one-on-one -on -one fighter. And then we have the side story game, X-Men Wolverine, Wolverine's Rage. Uh, this one I played a little bit more. Again, kind of a platformer. Not too bad. Uh, we also had the two Legend of Zelda games for the system. This is Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Uh, there also is Oracle of Ages. I'll talk about that one in a little bit. These were um, spin-off games in the Zelda series that uh, Nintendo actually licensed to Capcom to develop, of all things. And uh, not really a bad game whatsoever. Uh, plays a lot like Link to the Past. So if you like that game, I would say you'll probably get into this one. Um, I haven't completed either one of these. I think they just have uh, you know small similarities in the gameplay. But definitely worth, worth a look if you're a Zelda fan. Uh, so then we'll get into the loose cartridges I have in my collection. I'm just going to scoot this over. Um, so you have something to look at. I know it's kind of a bland background here. Um, so the games themselves came in two different formats. There were the ones that are in these black, thin cartridges, and then there's the ones in the clear cartridges that have this bulge on the top. Uh, the reason for that is the ones in the black casing work for the Game Boy Color as well as the original Game Boy, and then the ones in the clear casings only work on the Game Boy Color. They're the ones that were enhanced a little bit more. So I'll go through the black casing games first. Uh, first one of these is Azure Dreams. This was also released on the PS1. It was kind of Konami's take on Pokemon. Uh, wasn't nearly as successful, of course, and uh, I don't know, just kind of an obscurity for the system. Then we get into uh, Bomberman Quest. This is actually a Bomberman RPG, and uh, it's not half bad. I played it a little bit, and uh, I could probably recommend that one as well. Uh, we have a new game in the Blaster Master series, Blaster Master, Blaster Master, <laughs> Enemy Below. It's a hard word to say fast. Um, good game in the series. If you like these games, this one would uh, definitely be recommended too. And this was, I think, the first one when they started to make a couple new ones. Uh, then we got a PS1 game and uh, also one for, I don't know what other system it was, but something else came out around this era. Uh, then we have a game in the Chase HQ series. Uh, this one is Chase HQ Secret Police. Uh, like that Porsche 911 that's on the cover there. It's a nice one. And, uh, I don't know, decent game in the series if you like those. Uh, one of the really sharp games on the Game Boy Color, this is one that I'd like to have complete, is Ghosts and Goblins. This is uh, really well done. Uh, good use of color for the system, and especially for one that doesn't require the Game Boy Color extra power to be in that clear casing uh, cartridge. But, uh, yeah, Capcom did a nice job on this one. I would definitely recommend this if you like the series. Uh, another oddball Konami game is uh, Konami International Rally. Uh, decent rally racing game, and always nice to get some more of those in the systems. One I got recently is uh, Little Monster by HTEC. This one is uh, I don't know, kind of their take on a Pokemon game as well. Obviously that was the big rage around this period, uh, but not really something I played too much. Um, then we have Mega Man Extreme, and uh, we'll talk about the sequel to this one here in a few minutes. Um, good to get a uh, unique game in the Mega Man series for the system and not just a rehashed version of the NES ones, kind of like we had for the original Game Boy. Uh, Capcom really liked the Game Boy Color, as you can tell. Um, another Capcom title is Metal Walker, and uh, this one you see pretty often. I think it sold pretty well, but uh, I don't know, just another solid Capcom game. Uh, Power Quest, this one's actually a one-on-one -on -one fighting game by Sunsoft. This one's very easy to find. Then we have uh, Quest Fantastic Journey. I think that's what, or sorry, Fantasy Quest Fantasy Challenge. I forgot it, what generic title it has. This one is another reskin. Um, you don't have to like the Quest series whatsoever, especially that crappy N64 game, to like this because this is Mr. Do with a just reskin as different characters. Um, so if you want to play Mr. Do on your Game Boy Color, highly recommended and uh, really good one. 
Uh, another good selling game for the system that's fun is R-Type DX. This is another one I'd like to own complete eventually. Um, really sharp um, upgrade to the Game Boy version of this it includes R-Type and R-Type 2. And um, I would say this one's essential if you're going to own a Game Boy Color and you like shooters. Then we have Revelations the Demon Slayer. This is a uh, side story Shin Megami Tensei game. Um, I don't know, I haven't put any time into this to be honest, but uh, I would say this one's probably one of the slightly more expensive games in the system. Another Oddball Titus game is uh, Rocks. Um, good puzzle game actually, it's Japanese developed and uh, this one kind of just fell through the cracks I would say. I don't see this one hardly ever, uh, but it's decent. I would say if, you know, for the few bucks it costs, it's definitely worth grabbing. Uh, one of the true oddities of the system is this game. This is the Singer Sewing Machine Operation Software, which was actually developed by Natsume. Uh, this came only <laughs> bundled in with a sewing machine. And uh, the idea was to get younger kids into sewing as a hobby. So it came with a teal Game Boy Color and this software, which linked up to a uh, sewing machine that looked like an iMac. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, this kind of flopped as a whole concept. I don't own the sewing machine, nor do I want to. It's just extra bulk for uh, an oddball collectible. But the cartridge itself um, is definitely a neat little thing to have. This never came in a box or manual, so this is as complete as it gets, uh, other than owning the whole sewing machine packaging. And um, I don't know, you can design stuff with your Game Boy, and then the idea was that you would transfer it to the sewing machine and, and make it. But I don't sew and uh, don't really have any intention to do, do that. So. Just an eyeball, this game does go for a ton of money now. I actually got it um, a few years ago before it blew up, but uh, this is one of the more expensive Game Boy Color games, believe it or not, just due to the rarity and odd, odd nature of it, I guess. Uh, then we get into Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. This is a uh, reimagining of the original Game Boy Zelda game, and um, definitely a welcome addition. This, I think, was a launch title for the system, and it was really just to show off what the new hardware could do um, over and above what the original Game Boy could do. So, And again, a nice Zelda game. Wouldn't mind upgrading this one to complete it someday. Uh, then we'll move into the Game Boy Color games that require the extended hardware. So these are the, the ones that really push the system, if you will. Uh, we have 1942. Again, a good Capcom shooter. Would we'll definitely like to own this one complete as well. Um, just a nice enhanced version of the uh, original arcade game. I actually enjoyed playing this on the Game Boy Color much more than the NES version of this game, and uh, I would recommend this one as well. Uh, another oddball one is Armada FX Racers. Uh, this is a really bad, <laughs> glitchy overhead racing game, which normally I would like. Uh, this one's just executed very poorly, and it's even weirder that it's a strange side story game of the Dreamcast Armada game, which had nothing to do with racing whatsoever. Uh, I guess the developer thought this franchise was going to be big, but it uh, didn't really happen that way. Uh, another popular title for the Game Boy Color. This is a, um, I guess, a reimagined version of the NES game Crystallis. Um, good action RPG. Always played a little bit of a second fiddle to the Zelda games, but it's a solid game in its own right, and uh, I would recommend that one as well. And yet another re-skin of a classic arcade franchise. Here we have Dexter's Laboratory, uh, what is it? Robot Rampage is the subtitle. Again, don't care anything about Dexter's Laboratory. However, this is Elevator Action by Taito. <laughs> yes, it is a, uh, actually the Japanese version that is still branded Elevator Action goes for a ton of money on Game Boy Color. Uh, but if you don't mind, just with uh, different characters added in, it still plays the same and it's a really fun game actually for the system. Won't cost you more than a couple bucks. Uh, then we have Dragon Warrior 3. Uh, this is a uh, enhanced version of the NES game, and um, nice to have that on the go, I guess. Don't not really a huge Dragon Warrior fan, but I definitely understand the appeal. And uh, again, this one was probably one of the more flagship titles for the system at the time. Uh, another good title series that got a release on the Game Boy Color is Lufia, and this is Lufia The Legend Returns. Uh, I believe Natsume actually handled the development on this game, or maybe somebody else did. I don't think Taito did it. But uh, I've always kind of liked the Lufia franchise, and this one's not too bad to play. Um, d definitely another one I would want to own complete if I could ever upgrade that one. 
This one doesn't go for a whole lot of money, but I had a really hard time finding this game. Uh, this is the Magical Drop port for the Game Boy Color. Uh, Magical Drop has been around for a long time in arcade form and a very popular game in Japan on several different systems. But uh, honestly, we've gotten very few of these on US systems, and, and uh, this is one of the rare exceptions. A uh, very small publisher put this out in the US, and I think this one's one of the rarer games to the system. Just doesn't really seem to have caught on with collectors yet, but uh, I would say this is one to watch. Uh, I talked about Mega Man Extreme. The sequel to that, Mega Man Extreme 2, is on one of these enhanced cartridges. So this one is a little bit more of a graphics powerhouse and um, definitely a fun game as well to play. Uh, another one of the rarer and more expensive games to the system is this, uh, Microsoft Pinball Arcade. It's actually a decent uh, pinball compilation. I believe this originally was like a PC game. That somehow they turned this into a Game Boy Color game. Uh, but this one's pretty good. I would, I would recommend grabbing that. Uh, another one of the cool exclusives for the system is Resident Evil Gaiden, and uh, very graphically impressive what they were able to do uh, with some 3D effects on the, the Game Boy Color. Um, and, you know, again, it's if you like Resident Evil, I would say this one's definitely worth getting, uh, but really just notable for what they were able to pull off with the system. It didn't sell well, and uh, I think this one is one of the more difficult ones to find that's definitely worth chasing down. Uh, one I've been playing a lot lately is this uh, obscure Natsume release, Return of the Ninja. Um, I would say of anything featured in this video that isn't complete, this would be the one I would want to own complete the most. It's just very, very difficult to find. Uh, this game definitely has its flaws, but uh, for a ninja action game on the system, it's well worth grabbing. Um, has two ninja characters. The stages have a lot of variety. Uh, again, there's some flaws in the, the game. I don't know, functionality a little bit, but uh, it's well worth getting, like I said. I, I like this game. Um, it was worth putting the extra time into it to, to really get to know it. Another reskin game. Uh, <laughs> this is Sergeant Rock on the front line. Um, Sergeant Rock, I believe, is like a third-tier comic book hero, which uh, probably most people don't even know, especially around the era that this came out. Uh, but the key word there is on the front line. Uh, front line was a very early Taito arcade game, and this is a reskin of Frontline. <laughs> and it's actually very fun. It's a uh, over, overhead run and gun. Um, I would definitely recommend. You can grab this one again pretty cheap, and uh, it's well worth playing. Uh, another game that's kind of got an unusual title is uh, Space Marauder by H Tech. Uh, very obscure release, and this is a continuation of the Burai Fighter series that started on the NES um, by a small developer in Japan called Kid. Uh, I would recommend this game as well. It's a fun, just kind of hybrid shooter with some open um, open scrolling, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, but it's, it's well worth playing as well. Uh, one I haven't put much time into it is Spawn by Konami. Um, just was kind of curious that the system got a Spawn game, and uh, I don't really think this one is too well known, but uh, decided to grab it and haven't put much time into it yet. Uh, then we have Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. I would say this is probably one of the best-selling games on the system, and for good reason. Uh, it's a full reimagining of the original Mario Brothers on NES, and uh, or Super Mario Brothers on NES. Um, enhanced nicely for the system, and uh, I think it's even had like save points and things like that. So, well, well worth playing and a good one to take on the go uh, if you like the original Mario game. Another oddball Capcom game is Toki Tori. This is a uh, puzzle game. It's decent. I've just played it a little bit. Uh, but again, just Capcom had a lot of love for the system. They definitely put out some of their own releases, which was uh, very nice compared to all the licensed crap that also inhabits the system. Um, another more obscure one is Towers Lord Banoff's Deceit. This is not one I've played whatsoever, but uh, grabbed it just because I didn't know what it was. Uh, another one I got recently that is one of the more expensive games on the Game Boy Color is Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, it's kind of a lousy Zelda clone, and um, I don't know, just another oddball Titus game that probably didn't get a very large print run. And the last game I have for my collection is the other Zelda uh, variant of the Capcom developed games. This is uh, Legend uh, or Oracle of Ages. And um, pretty much what I said about Oracle of Seasons applies here, uh, but this is the blue variant and the other one is the red variant. There's some slight tweaks to the gameplay on either version, uh, enough to get you to buy both of them, I guess. And um, ultimately I'd like to get this one complete just so I can match my other one, but uh, that's about it. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I just really wanted to give a, a look into the system because there is a lot of good games that fly way under the radar on it. Um, that said, there's also a ton of just licensed crap on the system, so you got to be very delicate about what you're buying. 
Um, you're not going to spend a lot of money on it is the good thing, no matter what. So you can take some chances here and there. I would say I'm pretty close to having just about everything I would like to have in the system. Obviously, having Shantae would be um, a big perk. Uh, but that being said, you can get a good collection for the system for not a whole lot of money, which is a nice thing. So hopefully you liked the video. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.